Welcome to Season 7, Episode 14 of the Ubuntu Podcast. In this episode, we're going to have a good old chinwag about some very cool, mysterious technology. Mm. Um, we've got a command line love, and we've got your feedback. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat thingamabob on the website, <laughs> or and in the UUPC IRC channel on the Free Node IRC network. I'm Tony, and joining me this week again, it's the full team. It's Alan. Hello. It's Mark. Hello. It's Laura. Hiya. So... How are we all? Great. Yeah, all right. Awesome. Well, uh, let's crack on with it. No, no. <laughs> let's delve into some of those statements a little bit further. Alan, just how are you? Yeah, great. Have you been up to anything interesting? Yeah, I took the day off yesterday. Oh, that's nice. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, worked on some Ubuntu stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, really? I'm getting their value for money there. <laughs> no, I was working on stuff that I really couldn't justifiably do while being paid. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I figured it was not within my job description, so I'll just take the day off and work on it. And uh, yeah, it's it was not... um, Ubuntu Mate Remix stuff that uh, I've been working on with uh, Martin Wimpress, who oh. we interviewed a few weeks ago yeah, yeah, uh, about the Mate ago, Project. Yes. So we kind of got together and decided to make a um, an Ubuntu Remix. And okay. um, yeah, we did that. Cool. And that's going well. Yes, People it's going well. We're still working it. on it. It's not quite done yet. Right. Uh, but... Yeah, once it's done, we'll put an image out and people can play with it. So people can't play with it just yet? No, not yet. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll let everyone know when they can. Everybody will be on mm. Tenderhooks. Yes, keep an eye on the website, ubuntu-marte.org. Uh, cool. So, Mark, what about you? Uh, I went to the Typo 3 Developer Days in the Netherlands. What's that about? <laughs> so Typo 3 is a, a really popular open source uh, content management system. In Germany, <laughs> <laughs> right? But you were in the Netherlands. Uh, yes. So I mean, they've got a, their community is sort of they're, they're spread out, spread out a bit from Germany. Like they have some in the Netherlands, and they've got a, their organisation is based in Switzerland. And they've, there's, there's a few people in the UK and one person in America. Who <laughs> like the David Hasselhoff of content management systems. You're the second person I've spoken to today about this who made the David Hasselhoff uh, <laughs> comparison. Um, Are they also big in Japan? <laughs> But yeah, so I was I was there at their developer days where they basically have all of their developers doing workshops, much like an Ubuntu developer summit oh, cool. used to be, or more probably more like a sprint, perhaps. What's your interest in Typo Three? Um, right, so we were running a uh, my, my as my work um, Oswatch, we do sort of uh, community building activities and stuff, and as part of that, we've been doing some work with uh, running communication workshops for the developers of Typo Three to uh, encourage them to talk to each other. Right, well, and getting them all in together in one room was a start. Presumably. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did talk to them all at once. We we re- we ran a series of sort of smaller sessions. It's not the kind of thing you could do to two hundred people at once. Right, but no, yes. So we did, you know, sessions on various areas of communicating and whatnot. <laughs> nice, cool. You communicated that well, Mark. Yes, <laughs> you, should, you should be paid to do it. <laughs> Laura, what about you? Uh, I've been playing with my awesome new phone Ooh. and Miracast. Okay, so awesome new phone is what? My Ubuntu. Sony, no, oh. no sorry. Uh, Sony Xperia, Xperia Z. Z1 Compact. It's nice. It's awesome. It and, is quite nice. Android? Yes, but mm. with some quite funky Sony stuff on top. Ooh. Okay. And and Miracast? Hmm. <laughs> so I think we should show. save it for a, a longer discussion. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. okay. Well, why don't we do that then? Okay. <laughs> So, uh, let's have that discussion now. (laughs) (laughs) Smooth. (laughs) It was worth the 15 seconds. It's almost like like we planned that. (laughs) So, what is this thing you've bought? Um, It's a Miracast receiver. uh, Well, a Miracast adapter for my television. Who who makes it? uh, My adapter is made by Netgear, but lots of people make them. Okay, so this is a thing that sits under the telly, Mm -hmm. plugs into the telly. Mm -hmm. There's lots of them about. Yep. You happen to have bought the Netgear one. Yes. So new tellies do it anyway. Oh, really? Yeah. What smart? What you call smart, smart TV? tellies, yeah. I don't know if it's all of them or Sony and some or whatever, but right. I've got a Sony Bravia TV, but it's a few years old and it doesn't do that. Right. Um, so this plugs into the HDMI socket on the TV mm. and gives me that receiver capability for and Miracast. Receive, receive what? Yes. So... Miracast is you can say on your Android tablet 
you can click the cast button and it will cast the screen to the the TV. entire screen yes so whatever you've got on the screen anything at all anything that you've got on at all on the screen so you could be careful obviously <laughs> but the chrome i don't <laughs> i don't know what you're saying so this is different to a chromecast so Yes, a Chromecast, I believe, is just in the browser, or is that everything? No, the Chromecast is different. Should we do the Chromecast after this? Yeah, one? Right. Okay, then. So, what what would you use that? I mean, I can understand. Like right now, mm-hmm. we are casting your tablet to the screen so we can see the clock that tells us how long we can talk about this subject. Yes, and that's what, what real... sort of sparked the idea. Ah, okay. What real world example of <laughs> what you would actually do that's not podcasting in your lounge? Studio L. Oh. <laughs> Is that not enough? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So <laughs> you, when my mum and dad were here, um, we were projecting photos. We'd been out okay. for the day and uh, we all the photos I, I downloaded to my tablet and then projected them on screen so we could look at them. In fact, before that, we looked through all their holiday photos, all 160 of them. <laughs> uh, Hello, mum and dad. Hi, mum. She doesn't listen. So, so let me get this straight. So, you've got an app on your tablet that's that's like whatever it could be, mm-hmm. and it's like photos or browser, yeah. anything, and it just the entire screen goes. I mean, I can see on yeah. your TV the three soft Android buttons: back, yes. home, and and switch, and the icons and, at the top, and the pull down thing. I want to reach over to your telly and swipe down from the top of the screen for oh. some reason. Um, is can you just send one application rather than the whole machine? Hmm, that might be what throw is. So that's okay. the Sony thing. So cast is a general Android thing. Um, I think Sony call it screencast. But um, Sony also have this concept of throw. And as far as I can tell, it's exactly the same thing. But right. actually... Just their branded version of it. Or well, no, it has both. Uh, okay. So it might be that throw is the specific thing because that's in like their album app and their video app and things. I haven't tried that, but maybe that's what that is. Okay. So and of course, some some apps will do full screen, so you won't see like we've got the uh, we've got the the bar at the top and the buttons at the bottom. Yeah, Chrome so, browser doesn't seem to let you go full screen on no, Android. But like you know, if you were playing uh, a video in the YouTube app or something, you could go full screen. Yes. But, but when you say playing a video, so you, I mean it's full screen on your on your device. But what's the latency like? Is it is it is it sending like VNC, sending the contents of your screen? constantly to your tv over wireless i guess it must be yeah i mean it's essentially if you plucked an hdmi cable into your tablet if you could but with a bit of latency because it's having to Presumably compress that it and has throw it some, across the yeah. wireless and get to your tv isn't it and apparently there isn't a minimum standard of latency or maximum latency um in the miracast spec um but i haven't noticed what, it so it could be really laggy it but could it, be really laggy and maybe it depends on the device i don't know or what you're doing i mean what you're yeah. doing right now is is mostly a single static screen with some numbers changing so. i have played a short video i don't it didn't i didn't notice a problem and with the album you do a swipe and it changes right. uh, i noticed when i was swiping between pictures when i uh, projected my phone to the tv um it kind of it's almost like it's got two resolutions. It comes in and then clears. Uh, okay, so it sends um, like a low res and then sends yeah. The low res I mean, it's not really yeah. obviously lower, but right. it's enough that you can just about see it's right. different. So, how does this compare to other devices? What we you were saying that it's like a Chromecast. Well, so a Chromecast is a bit different, isn't it? Because you have apps on the Chromecast which receive data from apps on your tablet, rather than and that way the Chromecast doesn't currently just mirror a screen. Uh, well, kind of. So I have a Chromecast, which is similar to this thing, yeah. but but different enough in that it's not sending you the full screen from your device. Yeah. With okay. the Chromecast, so with the Chromecast on my Ubuntu laptop, I can go to YouTube.com and then there's a little button in the corner of YouTube and you just press that button and it sends whatever you're watching in YouTube to the telly, but that uh, through the Chromecast. Yeah. But the Chromecast loads like a YouTube app kind of thing okay and then just start streaming the video but the video doesn't come from your laptop right it's your laptop tells the chromecast go get to some YouTube. go and play this video and then the chromecast connects to youtube and then plays it full screen yes yeah, so i think miracast is sending it from your tablet or whatever so right. you're going by it i think that's what it's doing directly yeah okay certainly when i'm showing my photo album is literally showing it from yeah of course yeah it couldn't be coming from anywhere else no but so so 
the nice thing about the Chromecast is that it has quite good app support. So, right. for example, in in I can do send YouTube videos to the telly. I can also te- send uh, Netflix to the telly yeah. and iPlayer. So when I or the kids at home have um, Android tablets and iPhones, and their friends come around with Android tablets and iPhones, and they just open up whatever iPlayer or Netflix, and there's a, a button that cast button, the little square with the lines in the corner, they just press that and it sends it to the telly. And then they fight over the telly because they're all connected to the same <laughs> Chromecast and one of them will put a music video on and then someone else will say, no, I want to watch this. And oh. they'll just like take over. I leave them to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems like, uh, but you can also with Chromecast, there's an extension for Chrome where you can share your browser. Right. But it's, it's, it's really quite slow. I found it very difficult. Oh, okay. right. Not, so it's more like what Miracast are doing in sending what's on your screen to the TV. Yes. So the other week when you said you got a Chromecast um, and you told me what you could do with it, and I said, you can do all that on my Virgin TiVo box. Yes. And then this evening you discovered <laughs> that possibly Virgin TiVo are actually using Chromecast, a Chromecast inside or something. The, yeah, I think it, so the, your TiVo box shows up when I go to YouTube yeah. shows up as a device that I can cast to. But it's not... I, I don't think it's using the same protocol as your... Miracast. Net, Miracast Netgear box. Because I can't send YouTube to that. But I can send it to your, your yeah. TiVo. So there's at least... like So there's the Miracast <laughs> devices which you, allow you to send full screen. I'm I'm still not convinced of the usefulness it's just, of that. Other than, well, yeah, okay, there's a giant clock on your telly now. <laughs> so that's when, come from your tablet. So well when, done. When Mum and Dad were here, actually, we... We found that Mum's uh, Windows 8.1, although Windows 8.1 supports Miracast, um, the hardware she had it on didn't for some reason. So we actually couldn't use it with that. And we had to plug the HDMI cable directly into her laptop, which was fine. So basically, it's being able to do that without having to cable it. Right. Would, it, would it work for presentations like PowerPoint style in yes. presentations? Yes, I suppose it would, yes. wouldn't it? As long as you had a receiver in the. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, ultimately everybody might do. Um, Miracast is based on direct Wi-Fi Direct, Woody. Yes, so it's um, like peer-to-peer which is an Intel thing. thing. Yeah, and it's a stand. I uh, think that's well. Miracast is definitely a standard. I assume Woody right. yeah. is. Um, so yeah, that's and it's, so you, your graphics hardware has to support that. Oh, oh, and your operating system. And so I looked into Ubuntu because it'd be cool if I could do this from my laptop. Right. Um, and currently there isn't any Linux support for that. However, there was a project started in February this year by David Herman, I think. He's done lots of stuff. Um, so he's been working on that since about February, and it's not at a point where it's got a distribution package yet, um, right. but the source code up. And he's trying to make... He's, it's called MiracleCast, and that's basically enabling Linux to do this uh, push to TV is what right. Netgear call it. Um, uh, yes, you can do that from Ubuntu then. So there's there's another couple of projects that I've I've heard of. One is called XBeam MC, mm. which uh, isn't out yet, but I believe the developer is, is uh, um, doing a closed beta starting this weekend. So if you go to XBeam, X-B-E-A-M, MC. <laughs> dot com, awesome name. Uh, if you if you go to that website, you can sign up for the the, the beta. Uh, but the idea of that is, if you've got an XBMC box, you can send from other devices and beam to XBMC. Okay. So if you if you've got like a already got a media type device under your telly, you can you can do this kind of thing. And, but but in the way that the Chromecast does, where you send it and it streams directly to the device rather than it mirroring. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that's where the mirror in the yeah. mirror cast comes from because it's mirroring your screen. Um, the other one that's interesting is uh, Mozilla have uh, not so much announced, but uh, one of their developer evangelists posted a picture of a similar device to the Chromecast. There's a little white stick that runs Firefox OS, which apparently does similar things to the Chromecast mm. or these devices. We don't really know any details yet. Um, yeah. So I think Miracast, as you say, it's more about mirroring, I think. 
And so it's a bit more like you plug your laptop into a projector. Yeah. Right. It's a way, I mean, primarily at the moment anyway, it's a way of connecting your Android or similar Windows 8.1 device to a big screen without having to plug it into anything, which right. does away with some of the connector issues as long as it's HDMI supported. Does um, it do sound as well? Yes. Ah. Yes, sound and oh. video. Oh. Yes. Oh, well, that's slightly more interesting then. But, but the frame rate is slow, so you can't play a game on it. Uh, I don't know. I would imagine if it's going over Wi-Fi. Yeah, it would certainly struggle, I think, to keep up with very fast moving or, or things with lots of changes in it. I guess Tony's woken up. You know, we've talked about games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have hit my. Hit maybe my... maybe we should they, have tried. Is it there a faster before. version of Wi-Fi than what you'd have on an ordinary? Well, there's yeah, various fast Wi-Fi, but it all adds latency. And yeah. gaming, yeah. it's all about you know latency and frames a second. Yeah. But it, it's yeah, not yeah. doing it over your actual Wi-Fi, so it is like a access point. So there's nothing else using that connection. Huh? Really? Yeah. Oh. It's not connected to my Wi-Fi network. It's like it's on the yeah, full it's access like a point. Peer to peer thing. But it would still be oh. subject to radio it would still have frequency some, yeah. interference. Yeah, because there's, there's the uh, you've got your other wireless access point there, which is yes. going to be broadcasting into the same air. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realise that. It's direct connection. Yeah. Mm. Direct oh. Wi-Fi. Oh, Wi-Fi direct. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's different. And that's mm. really strange. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm still I'm still boggling at how what this is useful for. Photos. That's, yeah. <laughs> so, like, for instance, having a digital photo frame on your TV. Going back to what my mum does, she's got an Apple TV. And right. so she can play music from her laptop, streamed to from her laptop to her Apple TV, which plays it through her television. Right. Uh, uh, and can do the same thing with photo albums and have them displaying when we've got people around so you can see everyone's photos. But the difference between uh, if you lump Apple TV and Chromecast and... Um, those together, the difference is that you can multitask and that the tablet or phone is a second screen on which you can do something else or control the first screen. So with a Chromecast, yeah. you start a video and then you can go away and do yeah. something else and the video carries on playing. But that's playing through the, your internet then? Yes. Whereas that's... Mirrorcast, once you mirror the device to the screen, that is the only thing you can do on that device. And as soon as you swipe away, that's... That's that's yes. all you can do. So it's a, it's a dedicated. It's, a, it's, it's more like a VGA connection, right? Exactly. But better. Huh. I suppose that is the, the general use case. Is anything you might want to plug a laptop into a TV to look yeah. at on a big screen? Yeah. You, so like watching you a movie. Do this. It's yeah. just you haven't got to trail a lead across your front room, which yeah. is quite cool. Yeah. Do, do you mind if I ask how much the box was? Uh, I think it was. 20 something to Ooh. 30 something but that's that was discounted on amazon but right. there are much cheaper ones and i think that's probably about the most expensive one when it's full price that right. net gear and does it come with a power lead or is it uh, is it plugged into usb or something it comes with a usb lead that you can plug into your tv if your tv is new enough but right. it also has a usb power adapter oh cool so you can just plug it in Right, so that's the same, yeah. as the same as the Chromecast, and really. Just yeah. to give the listeners an idea, how big would you say it is? What would you compare it to? A deck of cards, perhaps? Half a deck of cards? It's a, it's Smaller than an Altoids tin. Card? Sorry? What? What? <laughs> Smaller than an Altoids tin. Bigger than a credit card. That, that Almost common a reference card. size. <laughs> oh, my tin. God. Uh, write in if you know what an Altoids tin is. I'm sure there were people you. out there who do. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a common we, geek frame uh, of reference. It's like one football field. Yeah. Everyone knows how big what? a football field is, and how big on, this tin is the size so, of a football field. So sorry, it's a very we, big Altoids tin. Any other, any other Alan Partridge synonyms you'd like to, <laughs> to crack out there? <laughs> um, just before we finish this, Breeza is listening live and has asked in the uh, hash UUPC IRC channel: Is the Miracast HDMI only? Uh, as he only has old style TVs. It's specifically HD. It's the the point of it is to transmit HD. So. I well, don't know. potentially, if you well, you wouldn't be able to get sound if you weren't using HDMI as well, unless you had some sort of split of thing. Yeah, well, the, so well, the answer is no. It's picture. HDMI only. Brilliant. That's yeah. the connections it's got yeah. as well. The, pi- the picture would be stretched. I think. I don't think it does anything clever. Right. Yeah, right. I can see black borders either side of your yeah. desktop. Okay. Mm. Excellent. So I, I would love to hear from people who would already have one of these devices not necessarily that one but ones like that yeah or you know similar type devices and what you would use it for because i i'd love to know what these use cases are i i i, I can't it's fathom just it awesome. yet. yeah you say, <laughs> you say that i'm not getting it <laughs> I can see. 
One of the it's my fault. One of the things, yeah, no. One of the <laughs> things about Miracle Cast, the the Linuxy project, uh-huh. the open source project, is that he thinks that with some very little effort, you'd be able to add Chromecast and Apple AirPlay support to it as well. Now that would be quite cool. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Well, if you're using such a thing and you want to tell us about your experiences, email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. And now, command line love. And it's two times the fun today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got two command line loves for you today. Uh, the first one is Reset. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So what does Reset do? So uh, I, I've used this a number of times recently. Um, so sometimes my terminal gets a bit messed up in that it, it's... Um, it's got dodgy characters all over the screen or I'm not talking Mario and Luigi. I'm talking like, you know, strange ASCII characters or something. Um, So if you've accidentally like catted a file and you accidentally cat a binary file, it like echoes. Yeah. (laughs) Like you would, (laughs) but yeah, you might or or in some way just messed up your terminal and you've got all your terminals laid out in a way that you don't want to close that one, but you just want to make it fix it. You just type reset. Typically, you can see this because the prompt looks strange. And yeah, you can't see characters. what you're typing. Yeah. Yeah. But you uh, can, if, as long as you can type and you see stuff appearing, you could probably just type reset, press enter, and the, the, it resets all the settings in that terminal. It clears the screen, resets it, and it's all back to normal. And it's really, really cool. And the other, way I've, the other reason I've had to do it is when I've done uh, connecting to an Android device, we're using ADB shell oh, yeah. over USB cable that monkeys with the terminal sometimes so that you've got a terminal that's like 132 oh, characters yeah. wide, but it's locked into only using 80 characters wide. And when yeah. you come out, when you come out of ADB shell, you're sometimes left in that kind of like portal inside your terminal. And if you just do reset, it undoes all that yeah. rubbish. I've had that when I've been doing like a, a telnet connection over a serial cable. Yes, that kind of thing. That. Yeah, reset. It's awesome. Okay, yeah. so that's a good get out of jail free card. And mm. the second one, Mark? Uh, is pipe things to column t what does so, that do so things like if you do mount and then pipe that into column dash t then it basically takes if you have an output of a command which has stuff in columns but they're not like lined up nicely so you have like you know some space and then something and then some space and then something then this will take those and make them all the same width so you end up with everything in a nice table in the shell yeah so c- commands that are commonly like malformatted like mount or df where the columns don't all line up, yeah, just pipe them to column dash T and it lines them all up. It's brilliant. Cool. And where have we stolen these from? Uh, commandlinefoo.com. Excellent. Well, thank you very much to them for letting us steal them. <laughs> Borrow. Borrow. Yeah. We'll Share give the them love. back. Share the knowledge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And now it's time for your feedback. We've had uh, a bunch of uh, lovely feedback from our listeners. Uh, so let's crack on. Uh, Remy Van Elst has emailed in to say, Here's my own solution for the Dropbox problem, a.k.a. encrypted local and off-site syncing of files between machines. Include URL here. I need something that encrypts the files on my machines and puts the encrypted blobs on a slash many servers and syncs to my machines. It uses SSH, Git, EncFS and DV, uh, DVCS autosync to do all that. It's <laughs> hard. <for> to say. <laughs> it's hard to set up. Has Brilliant. no GUI. <laughs> thus requires the CLI. Uh, but it is a breeze to use afterwards. It works on Mac and Linux, and all the individual components are available on Windows. Which implies that maybe they haven't been put together on Windows. Um, if you want a more friendly alternative, which also uses Git, but yeah. else has a GUI and works on Android, you might want to look at Git Annex. Hmm. And there's a URL. Uh, please do read through my article. <laughs> maybe even try it. I'd like some honest feedback. I have. Oh, really? Yes. And the honest about, feedback is? About a year ago, when we last talked about this, uh, we in fact have mentioned this exact URL before. Oh. And uh, yeah, I mentioned Remy. And uh, yeah, I tried it. And uh, yeah, he's right. It is a pain to set up. But once <laughs> it's set up, you end up with a nice um, encrypted folder on your local file system. Um, and when you run a command, it mounts it so that you can then see it. Um, and it's un- unencrypted. And so you can see all the files in there. And it syncs via Git. And you can see the 
Git process running and and syncing stuff all over the place. And it, yeah, it does work quite nicely. Um, I I switched away from that to using sync thing, um, which I've said a million times. Mm. But it is it is good if you like using those tools and you want it nice and secure and encrypted. It's so good. what was your reason for switching to sync thing? I think I had a problem with DVCS auto sync and it killed my machine. And also the other thing was I think I messed up the NKFS bit at some point so that I couldn't I couldn't actually see my encrypted files anymore. All right. Oh, I can see why that would be a problem. Um, but I think that was my mess up, not Remy's. Okay, cool. Well, there we go. And on Twitter, John D. Kent said... Ever looked at Spider Rock? Yes. Okay, I'll stop there then. <laughs> <laughs> he moved from Dropbox to that for the same security concerns that you have re-encryption. Now, I can't remember if Spider Oak or Crash Plan. I've used both. And one of them is written in Java and is horrible and ran like a complete pig on my laptop. So whichever one of those it is, <laughs> I didn't like. <laughs> the other one was quite good. Oh, good. I think one of them has a really terrible UI. And I think it was Spider Oak had a terrible UI for managing what do I sync and where are all the files and that kind of stuff. It may have been fixed recently. I don't know, but I didn't like it. Okay. Fair enough. What's up? So uh, Alex said... I noticed that you mentioned switching to another OS in order to use Spotify. Did you know that there's a Debian slash Ubuntu version of Spotify available? It's referred to as a preview version, despite having been released almost four years ago and received updates since then. What was the context of us saying I that? don't remember, no idea. to be honest. I don't remember I, us I, talking about Spotify. I do, I do remember someone saying, if you want to switch to another OS, to use Spotify, for example, I think. Oh, okay. I can't remember why. No. Oh, gosh. Maybe we, Sorry, maybe we missed that. No, yeah. So, yes, I, I've, I've certainly used the, what he's talking about since it was released. And yes. in fact, now I just tend to use it through the web browser. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah, it. me too. I just use the web player. Yeah. Yeah. Although there is a bug in the web player that it doesn't report to last FM, you're scrobbly. How? Oh. Yeah. Are, they, are they fixing that? Is well, that they said they bu- would fix it. And, well, they said they'd pass it on and, and it might get fixed in oh. some months. Cool. Hey ho. Go community. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Ed said, I have noticed that Gpodder on Ubuntu 12.04 downloads OG files from the MP3 feeds. Oh. Dear me. It seems that it doesn't look at the enclosure statement. I realized that something was wrong as I wasn't getting any Ubuntu UK podcast on my MP3 player. It doesn't seem that any of the web server links are wrong as I can W get the direct link to the MP3 of your show. It seems to be an error with Gpodder. Have you heard of this before, Tony? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, I think this might be because we changed the feeds and both in, both files are in the enclosure, aren't they? They are in the Atom feed, um, oh. but they are in separate RSS feeds, so that shouldn't be a problem. We, we did fiddle it, yes. So you might, what you might want to do is remove the feed from Gpodder and then re-add the, RSS. The, yeah. the feed that we've got, the new URLs that are linked on the top left-hand corner of the, of the page. Just remove it and re-add it and let us know if that, if that fixes it. If not, then we'll have to, I don't know, file a bug with Gpodder. I know the upstream Gpodder developer is very active and uh, very friendly, so we'll speak to them. Fantastic. Uh, we have also had an email from Lee who says... I am the founder of a new not-for-profit organisation called Pixelated Projects. You can find that at pixelatedprojects.org. The project has three objectives, to support individuals on the negatives of technology, plus to educate and demonstrate the positives of technology. The primary function of Pixelated Projects is to create unbiased and truthful resources and learning materials that can be used within our community, through schools, community groups, small businesses, etc., Over the next few months, we will be starting on the development process to create learning resources for schools and individuals concerning Linux-based technologies and are in desperate need of some more volunteers who'd like to help refine the unbiased information. But what is truth? (laughs) (laughs) What is unbiased? (laughs) Wow, that's a bold project. Uh, yeah, so go to pixelatedprojects.org and uh, maybe volunteer some time if you can. Yeah, but but keep the bias out of it. (laughs) Yes. And the truth then. I think that's the end of the feedback. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that tickles, titillates or taunts you, tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. We really would like to hear from you. So go on, do your duty, keep calm and compose an email. 
that's it for this show. The next live show will be on Wednesday, the 9th of July at half past eight in the evening, UK time, PM. I think we've covered that, haven't we? Yep. yep. Good. Okay. Right. Super. Excellent. Well, I think that was a that was a good, uh, interesting discussion about yes. display screen technologies yes. and uh, uh, remote viewing and stuff. Yes. Uh, I like the command I love. That was good as well. Also, if anyone's got any interviews, uh, people they think we should interview. Oh, I've got one. Okay. I'll better email I've got one too. us. Yeah. Yes. Podcast so at ubuntu-uk.org. Or, uh, you know, poke us on Twitter at UPC or any of us. Yeah. Hope you're Tony Whitmore yeah. or, or Joe Marks Johnson. We're always interested, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's, thanks <laughs> for listening and uh, join us next time. Bye 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 bye. 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 bye.